Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. We're out here in the carving tent. We're getting ready to carve up an owl like this. Owl in a hollow, as you guys can see, right through. We're going to carve it up out of just an end cut. This is only like four inches wide, maybe five at the base, but it's not very big. We're talking about 24 inches across. And uh, yeah, just kind of going to walk you guys through the idea. You guys will take it, make it your own, but... You know, here's a new idea for uh, beginners and to use some of that scrap wood you've got laying around from other projects. If you guys are interested in a step-by-step -step on this, be sure to stick around, give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, don't go anywhere because we're going to start making some sawdust. Hey, 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 all right guys, let's get started. As you can see, I've drawn a rough outline of an owl and we did a circle within that circle, okay? And that's going to kind of be like our wood and bark outline. And I'm leaving that about two two and a half, three inches thick all the way around just so there's enough meat. First thing we're gonna start doing is going in about quarter of an inch. We don't always just cut right through. We're kind of outlining where we want things to be. Especially those pieces we're gonna cut away. Here I'm telling you, hey, look at this, it's four inches thick, blah, blah, blah. All right, so again, cutting in about quarter of an inch all the way around this circle. going in about doing the same what we're gonna do is get an idea of like what we want to start removing by putting that circle in and then start outlining our owl you can very easily goof up now I'm keeping the horns of the owl like extra long just so I can keep them attached to that upper part of the round now this could prove to be a bad idea because the round can dry out more and crack and kind of you know pull his head apart so you could detach those and have just the base of the owl being the only thing connecting it to the hollow or the circle. Now there I did an angle cut in up to the line because we want the owl to set back in the hollow just a little on some points. Like we want those horns to be back in and so we'll cut them up in in a minute <laughs> a lot of this stuff though guys is why i'm doing two camera angles because it's really tough to like give you an exact word for word um obviously if you're able to watch the video a couple times and slow it down and pause it in spots i think you would be able to get the idea especially if you've already been carving for a little while you know this isn't a super hard piece but you know it's not as easy as some others Now when you cut straight through, sometimes it's tough and your bar can pinch. So if you work your way back and forth like I'm doing, and you're just angling and kind of rounding slowly, you can make it happen. And if you guys see there, I'm removing small wedges to that original line. This gives me room, well it gives the bar room to be able to make the rounded cut. Sometimes those round cuts go easy and you can just and then other times your bar will continue to pinch and those sort of things. So it's kind of like making a relief cut by removing just a little bit of extra material where you're plunging the bar in. We're just kind of cleaning up. I know there's not really anything good here, but using the nose, upper nose of the bar, kind of like a saw just to sort of clean up lines. Again, if you guys have questions, ask below, okay? I'll try to answer them. If there's a tutorial for something you guys would like to see, or maybe you'd like to have me do a tutorial on something we've done a tutorial on in the past and just revamp it, let me know, all right? I'm also starting a list of subscriber requests, you know, things you just want to see me carve. It doesn't necessarily have to be a tutorial, but you want to see me carve a what? A truck tire? A cinder block? I don't know. Comment below, let me know, and I will add your name and that carving to the list. And then when I make that video, I'll give you a shout out and uh, we'll make that carving. We're going to start doing those things, I think, this, this summer here. So that's going to be pretty soon. It'll be pretty fun as well. Be pretty fun as well. Jeez, that sounded awful formal. Should be pretty fun. <laughs> oh, jeez. Just being candid with you guys. So we're making plunge cuts. Remember, as you guys plunge in, use the bottom of the nose. Don't use the very tip of the nose, okay? These sort of cuts, we could be dealing with quite a bit of kickback. This is why I say it's important to wear your safety gear. Grip that saw like you stole it 
and be safe. Be safe, guys. Think about your cuts. Think about your space, what you're cutting through, too, what's around you. You know, your footing. You're not tripping. Just be safe. Have fun with it. Be safe. And, uh, you know, pay attention. <laughs> now, I do have this in a little bit of a time lapse. Otherwise, this whole video would be an hour or just over an hour. I think that's... Uh, I think that's how much footage actually I condensed some of it so it might have been like an hour and a half uh, creating this piece now it took me an hour and a half because I'm filming and I'm trying to actually slow down and make sure I have good angles and those sorts of things but carving this piece up you know without trying to film it probably like 30 minutes to be honest 40 minutes tops like start to finish Something like that. But if you're, you know, if you got these lined up and you're going to do a bunch, the more you do, the quicker they go. So it's not like, don't come out of the gate trying to make this happen in 30 minutes. You know, if this takes you three hours, it takes you three hours. If it takes you more, it takes you more, whatever. The more you do, the faster you get. So you can't try to be fast to do more. You have to do more to be fast. Hopefully that makes sense because it's like practice doesn't make you perfect. But the more you practice, you get better, and the more you practice, you get faster. Because you are, you, you start to learn, like, what cuts do what, you know. So you can confidently remove large chunks of material here and there, and dive right into a little bit of detail work with the saw, which saves time. It's just a lot of little things will make you faster, but practicing is the biggest one. You know, the more pieces you do, the better you should be getting. And if you're not getting better, well, watch some tutorials. Um, you know, if you're carving up like 10 owls and they all are not what you want them to be, rethink your approach. Uh, pull up some pictures of real owls, look at them, look at carved owls from other chainsaw carvers, owls that you want yours to look like. Study their carving. For me, I'm able to see depth, definition, and better detail in a carved owl done very very well by a professional i could i could see it better in that than i can an actual picture of an owl sometimes if <laughs> believe it or not so just you know take that into consideration um as much as i it's, it's not like i want to lose subscribers and followers but like there's other people that do owls way better than me they may not have tutorials right but you can look at their owl be like man that's what i want and then you can watch my tutorials and have a jumping off point and then as you practice you will learn how to get the detail that those other carvers do i don't always do like super like i don't do tutorials that are full of high crazy detail and the reason is if I were to do that, we'd be looking at, you know, a really long tutorial video, which the retention span isn't very long. People don't usually watch longer than five, ten minutes tops um, without fast forwarding. So most people won't even watch the whole video or a two or three part series on one carving. And it just in the past, it seems like people don't really watch those. I mean, I make those for my new tutorial tier members, you know, those sort of series with a full length video and a full breakdown, like, you know, a new tutorial video, say we did, say we did this video as a new tutorial. I would have the full length of this video on there with a full in-depth detail carve. Um, but even then, you know, with, uh, half a dozen to eight new tutorial members, only one of those people have already started watching the Honey Pot Bear tutorial. So, you know, hours go into editing part one of three for one view. Um, you know, and, and that tends to prove true as well here on the regular channel. So I don't know if I want to do that. I mean, if, if a lot of people were to speak up below and say, you know, we're okay with a one, two, three part series to do high detail on like a big bear or something of that nature, you know, then maybe I could work on it this summer, but... I don't really know if I want to without the confirmation. <laughs> Many people won't even watch this video this far. There'll be a lot of skipping and jumping. 
So guys, here, the saw's at an angle, all right? Jeez, I guess I had to do a little voiceovering, all right? And what we're doing is swooping down and up a little, okay? We're creating this layered feather look. This takes practice, it truly does. But the cool part is, is if you don't have it perfect, you're gonna clean that up later with the flame burr. All right, my burr is quarter inch shaft, half inch green coarse flame burr from Sabertooth Tools, you see me using it. But that thing will help you make those feathers look way more realistic and give you way more depth than just using the chainsaw. I'm just kind of putting lines in over here for some texture because it's tough to get in these spots it really is if you have a dime tip bar or you want to use one you could totally use that for these sort of things but what i'm showing you here is honestly we've been using like a stock 14 inch bar we're not using nothing crazy okay that runs the small very small 43 gauge uh pico chain it's not a dime tip bar so here we've moved the piece sideways, and this is his tail feathers on the top side. And what we're doing is kind of just making a little undercut under the body, and we will go behind the tail feathers there. So now what that does is that's going to lift everything out away from the hollow that he's in and give him a little more dimension. Just using this side of the nose and kind of making swooping lines, these will be the feathers for the top part of the wing closer to the shoulder. Get in there, you guys. You can you can play around. You can try different things. Like it's always like use these tutorials as a as a, as a jumping off point. One you can follow, but two to try new things. You don't have to just use the technique that I'm showing. You know, do the technique I'm showing, and then if you try something a little bit different, go with it. Let it roll. That's how you figure things out. That's how you you know you grow and in those sorts of things. Um, if it's a technique I know, obviously I'm going to share with you guys, but sometimes it's just like trial and error. You guys, you pick it up as trial and error. Here, as you guys see, the line comes down and swoops across and back down again. This gives the effect of like dimension rather than just some straight lines across that you just whipped in there real quick. You know, you pencil whipped it and you're done. Some things you've got to take a little bit of time and a little bit of thought through and, and do it. The back of the horns, trim those off. It's so like a piece like this as a wall hanger. You don't really want anything on the owl behind the face sticking out past the face, if that makes sense. So like as it goes from the face to the back, things should kind of round back. So the front part of your artwork is wider than the back part of your artwork, just a little bit. That way there the artwork is, you know, it kind of looks proper, I guess. So you sort of just rounded that face off a little bit, dusting it off. And apparently I did not get the footage of doing the nose and putting the eyes in all the way. Good golly, Miss Molly. I am sorry, you guys. I don't know what happened there. Um, so using that flame burr, you guys, you can dive in with that and go around in a circle to create these eyes, okay? Round them over. Then you can cut up with it, creating an eyelid like this, okay? And it's the same thing for the beak. Leave enough meat on the beak, as you guys can see there in the left screen, and use the die grinder to shape it. I know we don't have full detail on it. I don't know what the heck happened, or maybe I did it and I wasn't paying attention in this voiceover, but something happened. So under the eye, I just kind of did a line. It just gives it a little more dimension. So the more lines you make and those sort of things, you can give things a lot of dimension. You can also overdo it and, and have things have like too puffy or too many lines in some spots, but you know, just play around with it, you know, do your best, and uh, the next one will look better than the last one. So you can buy cross-cutter burrs through Sabertooth that are round. Um, I think they get up to a three-quarter inch, and you just dive in, and it makes a dome, and you're done. Well, that dome wouldn't be as big as these, um, but they are quick and easy. So if you're making small little production pieces or whatever, you can just put that bit in, knock the eyes out, and you're done. If you're doing a piece that needs a little bit more custom work, you want eyelids and stuff, this quarter inch shaft green coarse flame burr from Sabretooth is the way to go. You stick that in your die grinder, 
and you work and play around with the angle and as you guys can see I did a dome with it you know we use the nose of that bit cutting in and uh, you know it, it does it gets the job done it does nice I use the course because it doesn't clog up as bad and it's still still what am I looking for mm, cleans the piece up nice so like if you want with the extra course it would probably take away too much material to have this eye look refined and be able to do the eyelid so the course does good anything less than the course the piece really needs to be really really dry um, they do work you know the fine grit and the whisper burrs and all those things that saber tooth offers they're great for cleaning up but i think it's a better idea to block it in with that green one all right so here we are sphere this is a extra coarse orange sphere from saber tooth and what we're going to do is use this to draw a circle line all the way around the circle here and basically what we're doing is we're defining where the quote unquote bark will be from this hollow because we've already removed the bark from the log your bark's going to fall off anyway so just peel it off and carve bark on all right so this line we're creating separates the wood from the bark area of your carving so you pull that down and around and then you can do some other lines like this and detail it do whatever the heck you want in there okay you can make it remove material you can just whatever draw that line and then if you want to carve that in there go for it you can clean up the inside of the carving like this a little bit if you'd like it it, it really is preference the more time you put into it obviously the more detail and the nicer piece you'll have when you're done so I'm just smoothing out some of the overcut lines and things. This extra coarse burr does that really, really well. And I don't care about like the teeth marks it leaves. It just, those are character and we'll leave them. Now we're gonna start putting the bark in. Pulling it to me, as you guys can see, we go to the edge, we stop short. This isn't a specific pattern. This is a, you know, feel it out, do your own thing and just, you know, put it in. Go all the way around, go to just the bottom, whatever this piece is going to be for you. This piece is going to hang for me. I don't think I show it, but it should go all the way around the piece if it's going to be one that hangs on the wall because people can see all sides of it. But do this pattern all the way around. And, uh, yeah, then your bark is done. All right, don't forget to throw your initials in the back of your piece. All right, I'm just using the dime tip bar. You can use that flame burr, your regular saw, whatever. While you're back here, see these edges? Trim them down so they're angled in. That way there they don't stick up higher than the front of the piece like I was talking about earlier. So you can just kind of round stuff over, cleaning it up. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of time back here, just round it over so they don't stick out when you're looking at the piece. There you go, just to get that thing off, use your torch. And I'm just doing a light burn on the inside because I still want that to be the natural wood color. And I'm just going to burn the owl up and then burn the outside uh, bark. I want to keep the natural wood color on the inside to have contrast. But everything is dark and nothing is really going to stand out. So, anyway, that's not good. I'm sticking to it. So I do lightly burn the owl, which we're going to throw some orange on later, but you don't have to. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and burn the bark nice and dark. And just, you know, just burn it up really, really dark. Because we're going to go through and hit it with the box on it. And that'll help remove the char and uh, give us a little bit of depth with light and dark color. And I mostly hit the owl on the inside to just remove the edges. burn them off. Unless you want to take the time to sand them out, that's up to you. So this is a flap sander from Sandoflex. That's the extension I've made. Um, I still don't have these available. I gotta get a hold of my buddy and see what's going on with these. I've ordered all kinds of parts so that we can start assembling them, but I need him to uh, create some pieces for us, metal fab kind of stuff. And uh, once we can get those together, I'm gonna make these extensions available to you guys. So. 
yeah, I'll let you know when they're ready. But the Sando Flex is something you guys can get right off Amazon. Should be linked down below. Now using brown, we're going to try not to get this on the sides that I just showed you. And just sort of mist it over our owl. This is preference. You guys make this as dark or as light or don't use any paint and just burn it more. And then try to get in there and sand it away some or brush it away with a heavy brush. Whatever makes you happy, you know, whatever you want to do, guys. <laughs> Hope you guys have been enjoying this video, though. If you're here still, give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Also, check out my Bob Ross Carving with Bob on Wednesday videos. Dress up as Bob Ross. We have a lot of fun. Um, just did a scenery portrait carving from one of Bob's uh, paintings that he did in 1994. So I did a remake of it, but with the chainsaw. That came out really good. That was fun. People seem to enjoy it. So we might do a couple more of those in the future. If you guys want to see what that's all about, I'll put a link up above. And if it's not there, go to the playlist here on my channel. There's Bob Carving with Bob on Wednesdays, or Wednesday Carving with Bob. Check those out. Pretty fun. Something new. Trying something different. Got to have fun with it, you know? That's, that's the whole thing. Got to have fun with it. If you're not having fun with it, what the heck are you doing? What are you doing? So we're flap sanding over the paint here just a little bit, and it's just removing some, but as you can see, it gives depth, color, all kinds of coolness to our carving, and we don't have to add other paint. We're allowing the wood underneath the paint to be the other color in our owl. Now, the next step that I do is I use acrylic paint. Um, nothing super specific, guys. Like, some of it's really cheap, some of it's from the hardware store, you know, whatever color I need, I have them mix, or, you know, I just go buy it from Walmart. But hand paint the eyes. If you have an airbrush, obviously you can use that. I do have one, but I figured everybody has access to a paintbrush rather than an airbrush. And this is just meant to be more of a quick carve anyway. So put the eyes in, painted the beak, uh, just doing like a black line on the bottom side of the eyes, I'm not going up where the eyelid is because then it kind of makes it not look right shouldn't see the black line if the eyelids kind of closed but hand painting that ba-boom there he is you guys can always add lines in those feathers and stuff break them up give them detailed but it's up to you bark's done Ooh, look at the wood there i'm saying stuff but i don't know what i'm saying there oh yeah fantastic looks like an owl nice job buddy hopefully you guys came out about this item for me this isn't something i'm looking to make a ton of money on um I don't even know what I'm going to price it at. To be honest, you know, we might be anywhere from 150 or so. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I always hate saying prices because things always change. So I don't know. We'll put it out there and we'll see what happens. But this is going to be a wall hanger piece. And so what I did on the back was I put two screws in and took picture frame wire, some heavy duty stuff wrapped it across. Now this can be hung off a nail or a screw on the wall. And if you don't want to make yours a wall hanger, just go ahead and cut that bottom flat. Don't lose this tail, but you're going to have to cut a flat portion off the bottom so it'll sit up. Well, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for me. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys want to see in your next tutorial. I am making a list of requests. We're going to get going on those pretty soon. Also, big shout out to all my members. You guys rock. If you guys notice the second camera angle, that is the new shoulder mount my members were able to purchase because we got enough members. The next goal is a new GoPro. We haven't bought the new GoPro yet. We're still saving up for that. If you want to help and be part of that, you can jump in, join, become a member to the channel on the new tutorial tier. And uh, yeah, that money's going to go toward a brand new GoPro so we can uh, upgrade. Also, I am working on a three-part video series, carving up a bear with a honeypot for members only that are at the new tutorial tier. Uh, you know, kind of like my thank you for helping me get a GoPro. And uh, yeah, just you guys are due, right? You've been members for a while. You guys are due for your own tutorial video. So I'm working on putting that together. It might already be done. I don't even know. You're going to have to go check videos for members only. As long as you're at the new tutorial tier, you'll have access to those tutorials. <laughs> Hopefully that all makes sense. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Hope you have a great week coming up. Check out some videos popping up and I'll see you guys next time.